Shalom. I'm Charles Elisha Williams with Yahweh Apostolic Ministries. Our mission is to bring the unadulterated gospel of truth to all nations as it was first preached to Israel on the day of Pentecost. We hope that you will discover some new truth in this video and that it will be a blessing to you. Afterwards, I'll be back with information on how you can contact us. Enjoy. Now we're going to get into our little study. Why Jews cannot accept Christianity. There is a particular reason why Jews are not coming in by the tens, by the hundreds, by the thousands, by the tens of thousands. There is a particular reason why Jews are not coming into Christianity and it is not for the false reason because they refuse the Messiah or that they... Uh, 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 they, they, they crucified him at the cross at Calvary. According to my scriptures, he was made a ransom for all, all of our sins collectively, the whole world, Gentile and Jew, Gentile and Hebrew, amen. All of our sins collectively put him to the cross of Calvary because Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That while we were still in our fornications, while we were still in our adulteries, while we still in the wickedness of our sins he died for us yes. and our names were written on the palms of his hand he knew us before we were born he knew us when we were in the belly of our mother all the abuse that we went through all the neglect, all the rejection, all the sexual abuse, all the verbal abuse, all the all, 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 all of the lies that we've been told he knew that something in you was going to be drawn to him because he is pure and he is Kodesh, 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 he's holy. Kodesh, 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 he's holy. Kodesh, Yahweh, Elohim, he's holy. And he's called a holy people to separate us. We have to be separated from something. Everything can't be generic. Amen. Everything can't be the same because there's sin in the world. So we're going to study this thing here. Let me move this just a little bit. Okay. And forgive me if I miss... These things are new to me. Okay, so I am capable of making a mistake. Ask my wife. <laughs> I've made a few or two. <laughs> Amen. Why Jews cannot accept? I mean, that, that should be a that, that should be a, a, a question that we really try to observe. Notice the picture there in the Shemoth 20 and 18. Amen. Uh, that's Exodus. Amen. And they're there at the mountain of Sinai. Amen. Moshe, Moses is up there uh, talking to Yahweh. He is cutting himself out the tablets of stone, which are the Ten uh, Commandments. Amen. So, uh, so we see that those Ten Commandments, they were on stone. And don't forget, at Mount Sinai, the day that he came down with the tablets, the second time, back in his day, it was also the Feast of Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles. And when we received the stones and he changed the stones into our heart, now he wrote the Ten Commandments on our heart. Guess what? It came down. It came down. It came down the same day. On the day of Pentecost. Or the day of, of uh, uh, Shavuot, Shavuot. Pentecost. Shavuot. Amen. On the day of Pentecost. Excuse me for I'm still learning this Hebrew thing. <laughs> We're all learning. Amen. It was the Feast of Shavuot. The Feast of Pentecost. That he came down. And then 
thousands of years later, it was the day of Shavuot that we received the first day of mercy and grace that he came into our hearts. Amen. So now we want to know if this started with the seed of Israel and the, the, the Messiah and all the apostles and disciples were Israeli, Hebrew, Hebrews. Where are they today? Were they left out in the rain? Why do Jews have a difficult time accepting this so-called Christianity? I mean, we really have to, it's something to ponder. Uh, I mean, these are our brothers and sisters. These, this is the bloodline that brought us the blood of Hamashiach. Jews are very serious about their belief system. It's not a plaything with them. They mean what they say. They say what they mean. They pray and they study Torah. Everybody say Torah. Torah. Amen. The Messiah was a Jew. The apostles were Hebrew, Hebrews. Yahudin. Everybody say Yahudin. Yeah. Amen. Everybody say, I'm a Yahudin. Yeah. Amen. I'm a Jew. Yeah. Amen. Everybody say, I'm a Yahudin circumcised in my heart. Yeah. Of course, our spiritual heart is up here. That is our physical heart. Amen. Amen. And, and take a look at it. These people are serious. They pray. They fast. What is stopping them to cross the river Jordan? To come and embrace Hamashiach. The 120 in the upper room, including Miriam, which was the mother of Hamashiach, she had to be born again. There was no Catholic fantasy of a Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Virgin of the Virgin of Matamoros, or the Virgin of Cuba, or the Virgin of Puerto Rico, or the Virgin of La Santilla. There was no such thing. That's fantasy. It is not in the Bible. It's not in Torah. Amen. The 120. They were uh, the children... Um, Benai Abraham. Benai Abraham. Benai means children. Children of Abraham. Benai Abraham. We are Benai Yahweh. We are the children of, of Yahweh. We are Benai Ebri. We are the children of the Hebrews. 120 in the upper room, all Hebrews, waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. It came through the Jewish line. It came through the line of Abraham. But where is the seed of Abraham today? And I claim it's not their fault. These are our brothers and sisters of 2,000 years ago. If we lived 2,000 years ago, we would see that we were engrafted into them. They were not engrafted into Christianity. But the Goyim... The Gentiles, the heathens, were engrafted into the tree. Amen. At Calvary. To give us liberty. Amen. So consider the question, why aren't... Take a look. These are Hebrews. They mean their prayer. They study the Torah. And they're missing the Messiah. And we're going to find out it's the Christian's fault. Acts 2 and 41, 3,000 Hebrews, our brothers, our sisters. Acts 2 and 41, 3,000 Hebri, Hebrews, got baptized and received the Ruach HaKodesh. Everybody say Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach HaKodesh. That's saying the Holy Spirit in our English language. I mean, take a look at these brothers and sisters. You will find these at the wailing wall every day. Somebody is at the wailing wall, wailing and crying out for Hamashiach to come. They are waiting for Hamashiach to come the first time for them. We are crying out for Hamashiach to come the second time for us. When our, our brothers and sisters... God to be reunited with us. Again, you'll find out the reason. The apostles preaching the gospel, they won multitudes. 
at one part, the first part they won 3,000, another time, time they won 6,000, another time they won all of Asia. That's revival, brothers and sisters. That's the Holy Spirit. People being sexually abused, emotionally abused, under slavery. They hear hope in the word that there was a Messiah that died for their sins. And they had hope. And, and then they received and confessed the name of Yahweh HaMashiach. They were baptized underwater in His name. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Winning multitudes. Where are the multitudes being won today? Do we have a love for our Hebrew brothers and sisters? Or do we have a hidden seed of anti-Semitism there? Do we believe the Catholic lie that they are the ones that crucified the Messiah to the tree? That Catholic lie. It's all through Christianity. And the Catholic lie that they, they're asleep for a period of time. But they're about ready to be woken up with truth. And guess what? They're going to receive it from us. You'll see why. The whole world was one to a Jewish Savior. Yahudin around the known world. Saved by the gospel of a Yahudin Savior. Ha, -yad ha Yahudin, the Jew. Ha, Yahudin is not receiving the gospel today. Has the gospel changed? What is wrong? Or are we just going to accept ourselves in a box that they're never coming? Uh-uh. See, that, that, that was the whole known world. The whole civilized world. The great word of the Shem Tab. Of the good name. Shem is name. Good is Tab. Shem Tab. His Shem Tab. His good name. His name is not Shem. And it's not Ha Shem. His name is Yahweh. We see in the book of Acts. Kepha won multitudes of Hebrews. To the gospel of Messiah. For it is the Kuak. Power of ye Eloheinu unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Yahudin first where are they where are they we ought to be crying out for our brothers and sisters because this gospel is being hidden to them by their own religious leaders and by the Christian religious leader They do it ignorantly. I'm not saying that the Christians are doing it on purpose. I'm not saying they're going to bust hell wide open. I'm not saying that the... I am saying that they are the hand of ignorance, lacking of knowledge. And we need as much to have weeping and sorrow for our Hebrew brothers that are being blown up yes. in Israel. Yes. Isra. Everybody say Isra. Isra. L. L. Two words. Israel means rule as. El means God. We are Israel. We will rule as, as El. How do we rule as El? Because we have His commandments. That's where He starts. His throne with His commandments. Israel. Rule as El. Rule as God. Romans. Kahila in Rome. Kahila means letters. Everybody say Kahila. Letters. letters. Amen. Kahile in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Hamashiach. For it is the power, the coax, of El. Unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Again, to the Jew, the Yahudin first. And then also to the Greek, the Hagoyim. Ha means the. Ha means the. Everybody say ha. ha. Means the. So when you see ha... That is, a, that is an article. And then you see goyim, that means Gentile or Greek. Okay? So the apostles, they won the whole known world by the power of the word of Yahweh to the Yahudian first and also to the Hagoyim. Question we need to ask ourselves, 
What is going on? What is wrong? How do, are we supposed to win the Yahudin to the gospel? Take a look how studious they are. They get into it. They believe it. The word giveth life. Hebrews that study Torah and love the same word as we do. Why can we not win the same to Hamashiach? Are we preaching the same gospel? Oh, that's a good question. Are we preaching the same gospel? There's a lot of gospels out there. Are we, speak, are we preaching a T.D. Jakes gospel? Are we preaching, who's that young man there in, in Houston, Texas, where we come from? Are we preaching a Joel Olstein gospel? Are we preaching a Joyce Myers gospel? Are we preaching, who's that guy down there in Atlanta, Georgia, cash, cash flow or flow cash? He's got a lot of cash flowing. <laughs> huh? I said again. Chris Flow Dollar. <laughs> He's after your dollar. Amen. And John Hagee. Amen. Are we preaching the same gospel? We have to we have to take a look at this. Let us use the Torah as our moral compass. How do you like the pictures I I was able to grab? <laughs> little bit of pride there <laughs> pride comes before what <laughs> uh oh I better watch out <laughs> teshuva teshuva sister means repentance to repent yeah let us use the Torah as our moral compass to investigate what is truth and how do we get how did we get off track the Hamashiach says my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Yes. Now listen to what the son of Elohim said. The doctrine that I teach is not mine, baby. It's from him. So Yahweh HaMashiach did not preach anything different than the Torah. What's it say in Proverbs 4 and 2? He said, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my Torah. Everybody look at you and say, Don't forsake the Torah. Torah means the law. What are we taught by Christians? You're not under the law anymore? Ooh. Do they tell us that we can do Sunday worship and you people are under the law? Oh, you're law keepers? Thank you. Well, I'm a law keeper. <laughs> because when I go through the stop sign, I'm a law breaker, and I get a $500 fine. And if I'm speeding down there, uh, Interstate 20, amen, going 90 miles an hour like people are standing still, and there's a little blue bobber behind me, and he stops me, I'm going to yell at him, I'm, I, I'm not under the law. <laughs> <laughs> you can't give me a ticket because I'm not under the law. He said, you ain't under the law and I'm giving you a ticket because you're breaking the law. <laughs> now, if Yahweh gave us the law, can we say we, we're not supposed to be under his law? <laughs> Amen. Okay, take a look at this here. Tehillah. 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 119 and 1. It says, blessed are the undefiled. Oh, we want to stay undefiled. We want to stay clean. In the way who walk in the Torah, which means in the law of Yahweh. Are the Christians teaching the same thing? Are they teaching Torah? Mark, Marcos 7 and 13, making... Now, now we're getting into... We have a religious system. We have two religious systems, and we're in the middle. Do you ever see a you, you, you ever see a good hamburger? You got one piece of bread on one end, one piece of bread, and then you got all the stuffings. You know the the the, 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 the lettuce and the tomato and the onions, and you got the nice big juicy burger. Well, it's 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 we, we, and somebody getting ready to eat us. That's the devil. <laughs> you see, on one side is one religious system, Christianity. The other one is on the other side, the Talmud people. 
And they're both teaching us, we're in the middle, to break the law. Talmud or the Jewish religious system. They are actually against, they teach Torah, but they sneak things in there. You know, like you can only walk a thousand steps on Sabbath day. Uh, you can't do this on Sabbath day. And this is why Hamashiach came. He came to do good on the Hashabbat, on the Sabbath. Amen. He healed the blinded eyes. He did not break the law. He broke man's law. And these men were upset because when you are the head, guess what they get? They get this here. Money, honey. You get more honey with money. They, 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 they were the money people. So therefore they taught to break the law in a very sneaky way. To make it look like they were teaching the law. Now the Christians, they don't understand the law. They think that the law is bad. But Shaul said the law is good. Oh, I don't want to go there yet. God, there we go. So, let's take a look at Mark 7, 13. Making the word hadabar. Hadabar. The word. Hadabar. Hadabar of Elohim of none effect. Okay, who's he talking to? He's talking to these leaders. The leaders of the Jews. And they have another book besides Torah. And it's called the Talmud. Brothers and sisters, when people start talking about the Talmud... You back off a little bit. Those red lights and yellow lights need to go on and off. We ain't saved by anything in that Talmud. We're saved what's in the Torah. Talmud. What is the Talmud? Yahweh was instructing the, these people, these religious people. He says, hey man, you know, you're making, you're making the Torah of none effect because of your tradition." tradition of men Talmud which you have delivered in many such like things you do how about Romans Gehile in Rome 11 and 17 and if some of the branches were broken off who are the some of the branches that were broken off the Hebrews why were they broken off because they did not embrace Torah they did not embrace Torah okay and you, being a wild olive tree, that's us, were grafted in among them, and with them partake us of the root of the fatness of the olive tree. We came into the olive tree because of Hamashiach, Messiah, Yahweh Hamashiach. He came up in the traditions of his fathers because, guess what? He was the one that wrote it. In the beginning was the word, the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. The same was the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by Yahweh. All things that were made were made by Yahweh. He, Yahweh was in the world. And, Yah, and the world knew Yahweh not. Yahweh came to his own. And his own received him not. But to as many as received Yahweh. Gave he the power to become the Benai Yahweh. To become the children of Elohenu. Amen. He wrote the Torah. He was the walking, living testament of the Torah. But we don't hear that in Christianity. Why Jews cannot accept Christianity? Acts, Acts uh, 9 and 20. And straightway Shaul preached Messiah in the synagogues that he is the Haben Elohim. He is the son of Elohim. He preached to the Jews. The Jews received it. Many of the Jews. The first church was made up of all Jews. And a minority of Goyim. But when the Goyim left their Greek lifestyle. They automatically were adopted into the family. You ever known anybody. You, you, know, you, 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 you don't say this is my adopted child. This You say this is my child. You know what I'm saying? We're his child. Acts 17 and 17 says, Therefore disputed Shaul in the synagogue with the Yahudim. Okay? 
What are we showing here? We're showing the part that the Yahudin had in the first church. And with devout persons in the marketplace daily with them that met him. Why? Why can't they be one? Acts 13 and 5. And when they were at Salamis, they preached Hadabar, Elohim, in the synagogues of Hayahudin. Okay, he was there in the synagogues. On the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters, all this visitation to the synagogues was on the Sabbath day, on the seventh day of the week, but yet we are told we're not supposed to do Sabbath. We're supposed to do the sun god day. Sunday. Acts 13 and 14. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and they went into the synagogue on the Ha Shabbat, on the Sabbath day, Yom. Everybody say day, day. Yom. Yom. Okay, that's a pretty easy one. Yom means day. So we see that Shaul went into the synagogue on the Yom HaShabbat, on the day of Sabbath. And he sat down. And after reading, listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to get this in your heart. It says, after reading the law, Christians are telling you to break the law. Christians are telling you to eat pig. Christians are telling you to do Sunday worship. Christians are telling you Jesus, this Jesus was born on Christmas. Maybe their Jesus was born on Christmas, but our Yahweh was born, <laughs> was born. Maybe we are serving two different gods. Okay? He was reading the law. He was reading Torah. What don't we understand about that? This was after the death, burial, resurrection of Yahweh HaMashiach. This was after the ascension into heaven. This was after the outflowing and the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh with the speaking in tongues. Being people born again. This is after all that and he is preaching out of the what? I want you to say it. Because I want it to be part of you. I don't want to be preaching to you. I want you to preach back to me. He was preaching out of what? That's what the Bible states. And the prophets, how about that? Yet, the other side of the football game, the, our, our opponents, and we're supposed to love, amen, we're supposed to love even those that preach false doctrine. But we are, just because we love people that preach false doctrine does not mean we have to eat their doctrine. See what I'm saying? I mean, if we have a biological brother, a biological sister that's lesbian or homosexual, that means we can still love our biological brother or sister that's lesbian or homosexual. We can love them, but we don't have to agree with their lifestyle because Yahweh hates sin and he loves the sinner. Homosexuality comes from the pits of hell, from Hashatan himself. This is not the way Yahweh has created us. Take a look at it, man. This is in the New Testament. This is in the 13th chapter of the book of Acts that they were reading the law, HaTorah, and HaNavim, that's prophets. The rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Hey, you men and brethren, if you have any, if you have any Dabar, if you have any Dabar of exhortation for Ha'am, say on. If you have any word, give it to us. These were Jews, brothers and sisters. These were our brothers and sisters that helped us to cross over because of a Hamashiach that was Yahudim and Ibri and because of Father Abraham. Acts. We, didn't, we just do that, right? Acts 18 and 19. And Shaul came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with Ha Yahudin. He had reasoned with Ha Yahudin. It should be our Yahudin. It should be Yahudin people. 
preaching the gospel to us. It should be Jews and Jews that have been engrafted in preaching the gospel to the lost. How about Acts 19 and 8? And Shaul went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months. That means three months of Shabbats. Let's get a little radar on this here. There's four to five Shabbats to a month. Five, ten, that's fifteen Shabbats. They kept Shabbat, Shabbat. Shabbat, 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 Shabbat. They kept Shabbat. They didn't keep Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. They didn't keep Sunday, Sunday. They kept Shabbat. The seventh day. I mean, it doesn't take a mathematical giant to understand one, two, three, four, five. Seventh day and we rest. It doesn't take a mathematics. It doesn't take an Einstein. Seven. Seven, seven, seven. Let's all go to heaven. <laughs> Amen. Shamayim. Everybody say Shamayim. That's heaven. Okay. So there we have the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They were against Shaul. They were against the Messiah, and the rest of the apostles. Why? Because they were the controllers of the populace. They wanted, they, they wanted to control the people and get their money. They were religious people, but they weren't Torah-keeping people. They taught the Torah, but they did something different. And they kept people under bondage in the Torah that they weren't supposed to do so many stupid things that it's pitiful. The Messiah, Hamashiach, and Shaul, the apostles, threat, they threatened their establishment. You know, this, this group of people out there, uh, this political group, what do they call them? The, the Tea Baggers? Tea Party. The Tea Party is threatening, is a threat to the Democrats and the Republicans. Because the Tea Party wants things pure without a bunch of this garbage of politics. Which is the way that it was created in the first time, first way around. So that as much as the Tea Baggers, the Tea Party, is a threat to the Democratic Party and Republican Party, guess what? Yahweh HaMashiach, Shaul and the Apostles, they were a threat to that religious establishment that was getting lots of this and that's had it for years and years. Okay? Do you think that they're going to let this go? With, without pow, taking somebody out? People will kill for money, brothers and sisters. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money has its place. Amen. Good one, sister. Moses and the law was good, Shaul stated. They were against the Talmud. They were against the oral law. Take a look at Joshua 22 and 5. But take diligent. You know what the word diligent means? It means you, you got to find your brain. You got to blow some oxygen into it. You got to massage it. You got to bring it back to life. We are taught not to use our brain. We are taught to follow after the leader. When the leader should be Torah. Who should the leader be? Torah. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Amen. But take heed to the to do the commandment and the law. And the law which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, charged you to love Yahweh your Eloheinu and to walk. Everybody say to walk. walk. If you got to walk the walk, you got to talk the talk, you got to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Amen. And to walk all of his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him 
not to cleave unto the priest. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have committed five acts of blah, 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 blah. I have killed 15 people. Say a perfect act of contrition, a Hail Mary full of grace, and, 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 and come to church every Sunday for the next month. And you are forgiven. Oh, thank you, Father. And then after a month is over, they go out and kill 15 more people. Say, bless me, Father, I have killed 15 more people. We're not to look to the, because my Bible says, Father, Father, call no man Father. Don't bother to call somebody else Father when he's the Father from above, not below. Amen. Amen. We have our biological Father. This is, this is okay, a biological Father. You know, a lot of people get a little radicalized and they say they don't even call their Father Father. You know, that's a biological Father. You know, he, he's, he's your biological Father. You know, but we're talking about the religious Father. Okay, tell me your dirty stuff. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> All right. Hey, I, I can talk like that because I used to be one of them, 36 years. <laughs> Catholic grade school, high school, and college. Amen. And, and to cleave, to cleave. Do you know what's to cleave? Man, to cleave means, man, really get a hold of him and hold on tight. You ever hold on something tight? You have a love of your life, you held on tight. Hold him tight and serve him. We don't have to serve him. We want to serve him. He went all the way to the stake at Calvary for me. He laid it all down. He took on sin that didn't know sin. He took my sin. Hallelujah. It's not hard to love him. It's not hard to keep his commandments. I don't see what the big fight is. With all your heart and with all your soul. Amen. Oh, did I miss something? Okay. I said, same picture. But the, <laughs> the commandments of Yahweh, the Torah, was good and righteous, supposed to be obeyed, respected, honored. But man made commandments, the Talmud, we are supposed to run away from. We are supposed to run away from all these man made Christianity. That, that, that's why Yahweh hates organizations. They're man made. It's not Yahweh made. Why Jews? Hey, take a look at Revelations. Put this into your hat. For I testify to every man that heareth of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add, everybody say add. add. Unto these things, Yahweh shall add, everybody say add. add. Unto him the plagues, everybody say the plague. Everybody say, I don't want the plague. Amen. That are written in the book. I mean, if you want part of the plague, just mess with the book. Verse 19, if any man, if any ish, if any man shall take away, everybody say take away. Take away from the words of the book of the prophets, prophecy, Yahweh shall take away. Everybody say take away. His part of the book of life say, hold on to that book of life. Amen. Cleave to that book of life. Yes. Amen. And out of the holy city, from the things which were written of this book. Oh, I'm a little short on there. We'll still be able to read it. I hope it doesn't cut us short on the... Uh, is it going to cut us short on the video too? Okay. All right. In Deuteronomy, Devarim 4 and 2. Even in Devarim. Revelations is not going to preach anything different than the Torah. It will not preach anything different. Look, it says, And you shall add unto the word, Hadabar, which I command you, neither shall you diminish. He says, Hey, baby, don't add, don't subtract. You do that in, son, you, you, you do that in mathematical class, but don't do it in, in Torah class. You can add and subtract in mathematical class, but in Torah class, you don't add or you don't subtract. To diminish from aught thereof and keep the commandments of Yahweh. Amen. Looks like I cut them all, huh, Betty? Um, Mark 7 and 8. What is the Messiah talking about? He's talking to the religious people. What is he saying? He's saying, hey, laying aside the. You people, you people are laying aside the commandments. Oh, no. Laying aside the commandments of. Yeah. You, you guys are laying aside the 
the ha-mitzvah of Elohim. You're, you're laying aside the commandments of God and you are holding on to the tradition of Adam, of man. As the washing of the pots and the cups, there is no commandment in Torah as far as eating out of unwashing cups. It's not in Torah. So if you have washing hands or unwashing hands, it doesn't make any difference except for your sanitary purposes. And many other such things do you do. He said unto them, Full will you reject the ha-mitzvah, the commands of Elohim, that you may keep your own tradition, the tradition of the Catholic Church. The tradition of Sunday, the tradition of Christmas, the tradition of Halloween, the tradition of uh, 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 sunrise, sunrise Easter service, the tradition of Easter service. He never rose from the dead on a Sunday. He rose from the dead on a Shabbat. He is the master of the Shabbat. He rose from the dead on the Shabbat and he was crucified. In the middle of the week, which is our Wednesday. In the grave for three days, not a day and a half like the Catholic Church. I mean, they really must think our, we're pretty stupid. They really must think we're pretty stupid. Oh, he died on Good Friday. Well, what time did he die? Well, uh, we, 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 we're we not supposed to eat or anything. Don't eat any fish on that day. But I mean, don't eat any meat on that day. I remember I ate a hot dog on, on Good Friday. And I found out it was Good Friday. I said, oh, no, I'm condemned to hell. I committed a mortal sin. <laughs> that is man-made hogwash. Okay? So, we see that even Yahweh came to straighten us out. The word of Yahweh came down to show us how to live Torah. Not by breaking Torah, by being obedient to Torah, but by breaking and staying away from Talmud and any other books that people are giving you. All right, Mark uh, 7 and 13. Somebody get close to that. Mark 7 and 13, you might have to finish it out for me. He said, hey, you guys, you're making the word of Yahweh of none effect by your tradition of men. Matthew 26 and 60. What, what do they do? What do the Democrats do? And what do the Republicans do against Tea Party people? Uh, if, they, if, if they can't catch them in a trap, they'll tell a lie on them. They'll try to find something wrong with a character, and if they can't find something wrong with a the character, they'll create a lie. This is what they did. This is what they did with Hamashiach, Shaul, and the apostles. The religious party, the Talmud party, created lies against these people because they know they could not stand against them head to head, toe to toe on Torah. So they made lies. Matthew 26 and 60, but found none. When was this? This was at the crucifixion of Hamashiach. They were trying to find a witness. What type of a witness? A true witness? What do we do? We get on the witness stand back in the old days. says, says, uh, put your hand on the Bible and swear that you tell the whole truth and nothing but truth will help you God. Well, I do. Bound to taking the Bible out. <laughs> oh, this is all crazy, isn't it? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, then yeah, what would I do? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now catch. They're trying they're they're trying to crucify the Messiah. They can't crucify him under the law of Torah, so they gotta find somebody to tell a lie. He said they didn't find anybody, but yea, many false witnesses came, yet they found none. In other words, the false witness came, but they, they didn't hold any water. But at last two false witnesses came. And what did they state? They state, he's going to tear the temple down and in three days raise it back up. He wasn't talking about that temple of Solomon 
or the others. Acts 6 and 13. What's Acts 6 and 13? This is after the death, burial, resurrection. Remember, the Messiah's apostles and disciples are alive now. They're bringing the good news, not the good news. You know, it's good to snooze, but not during the good news. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, it's the, 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 the world was asleep in their sin. The world was asleep without any hope. The world was going, dying, and going to a devil's hell to live like hell, to, 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 to be treated like hell, then to die and go to hell. What kind of plan is that? That's a no plan. So here they are bringing the good news. Now, what happened? The good news started to reach the people and saying, Hey, we don't need the Sadducees and the Pharisees. We don't need Talmud. We need only the Torah to teach us. Guess what they started to lose? M-O-N-E-Y. That they can't give to their H-O-N-E-Y. Amen. So now, now let's let, let read that. It says, And set up false witness to which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and hot Torah. False witness. They told a lie. Luke 6 and 1. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first Sabbath that Messiah went through the cornfields. Uh-huh. Uh-oh, he went through the cornfields. All right. And his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them with their hands. And a certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? It's not lawful in the book of Talmud. Remember, it's not... They get people, people that do not study, they get the thoughts a little muddy. Do you see why it's so important to study to show yourself approved under Yahweh? Uh, that, that you need to, to study to show yourself approved under Yahweh. A workman that needeth rightly divided. If you, there's a right way to divide it, guess what? There's a wrong way. If there's a head to a coin, there's a tail. If there's right, there's wrong. If there's black, there's white. Okay? If there's holiness, there's unholiness. So, they're saying, Hey, man, you, you people, you're breaking the Sabbath, baby. They're pulling corn on the Sabbath. Nowhere in the Torah does it say you can't pull corn so you can eat. Finished. But yet, our Christian friends that don't understand this are saying, See, the law is burdensome. They're getting their language misunderstood they're getting the thought waves misunderstood they don't know how to teach it's not the law that is good that's getting them misunderstood they need to understand where these people are coming from these people are coming from the Talmud everybody say Talmud right but if you're hungry come on Right. They didn't go out there and collect all the corn. You see, these Christians, I am not a Christian anymore. I am a follower of Yahweh HaMashiach and His Torah, His law. And, 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 and they don't understand. They take a look at this and they judge. Well, they, they, and this is what they add up. Huh. Torah says you're not supposed to pluck corn. Wrong. Torah doesn't say that. Talmud says it. They both begin with T, but you got your T's mixed up. Are you, on, are, are, are you learning something today? Okay. How about Yoakon, 1 John, chapter 3, 4. Whosoever. Well, we can't be down that far. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth the law. So it is the transgression. Baby, listen, man, it says it right there. It says sin is the transgression of Hatorah. For sin is the transgression of Hatorah. 
Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also ha Torah. What don't we understand about that? The law was before, the law was joined, and the law is after. And the law is written on my heart. Please. What do you think? We are idiots? How about Yoakon 3 and 8? He that committed sin is, oh, 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 oh. Nobody likes to be called to that, do they? Nobody likes to be called, oh, you're the devil. Uh-uh. Even if it's true, they don't like it. <laughs> but your word says, he that committed sin or transgression is the breaking of the law, is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, Ben Elohim, the Son of God, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now I got a question for you. Listen up. You get to the you get, get this get the little golden crown and go to sit at the head of the class. <laughs> what do you think the works of the devil were? In the religious realm here. Baby, you get the crown and you go to the head of the class. <laughs> the works of the law was always, I mean, I mean, the works of the devil was always to break the law. Catch the first law. Adam, I'm going to create you a woman. Lie down and go to sleep. Goes out and take a rib out of his cage, rib cage, and, and creates a woman. Oh boy, created a woman. Amen. And 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 and, and I mean, we can you imagine living in a world just with one man? <laughs> he'd really he'd really mess it up. <laughs> he needs somebody else to help him mess it up, <laughs> or try to straighten us up. I don't know why he always got only one part of our brain of the man to be working both, and and the woman both both receptors are. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, so, so listen. The works of the devil. The works of the devil started back at at, at, at uh, Adam and Eve in their first transgression. He said, Yahweh said, "Hey, baby, look. See all them trees? You can have by any of them you want. But that one over there, man, you don't want to touch. Because the day that you eat of it, the day that you should surely die." So Adam knew. He taught Eve. There was the transgression. Adam was with Eve during the sin. And the devil said, Surely Yahweh won't kill you. He's trying to keep something good from you. He's trying to keep them good pork chops with those microisms working inside your body to make you sick and die early. He wants to keep them pork chops from you. He wants to keep them scallops and them raw oysters from you that are the vacuum cleaners of the ocean. He wants to keep them good stuff from you. He wants to keep them uh, 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 vultures from you so you don't... <laughs> I mean, we don't eat a vulture, do we? No. Why would we even think about eating a pig? If they eat a pig, they might as well eat a vulture. Because it's nasty, it's filthy. They eat the deadness of this world. They didn't create themselves. Now, catch this here. They didn't create themselves to be dirty. They were created to clean up the world. I mean, let's go face it. Come on, man. You, 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 you don't vacuum clean your carpets and then open up the carpet cleaner and get all that and, and sprinkle your food with it, do you? <laughs> you throw it away. We're Kodesh. We're set apart. We're holy. Okay? So, yeah. He says, hey, baby, whosoever committeth sin. Committeth means continually sinning. It doesn't mean sin here, fall down and go to, to Calvary. Not, it's, it's not for someone that, 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 that falls down here and there. And, little children, ben I, Yahweh. Little children, I have you sin not. But if you do, you have a lawyer, you have an advocate with the Father, which is Yahweh HaMashiach, the righteous, which is found where? First letter of John chapter 1 or 2. Now, take a look at it. 
This is why Yahweh has come into the world to destroy the works of Hashatan, and the works of Hashatan was for us to break the Torah. Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees asked Messiah, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread and washing hands? Are you with me so far? It's the stupidity of man trying to be smart and intelligent. But Yahweh came to deliver us from the hand of a man. Amen. <laughs> Did I hear hallelujah there? Said, what do you mean by that? <laughs> that might be a fiery question. <laughs> All right. Matthew 23 and 1. Then spake Yahweh HaMashiach to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moshe. So there's Moses to the left, and there's a seat to the right that it looked like in the days. And they sat down in that seat. And they taught from Torah in that. But then they would take a second book. So therefore, what did Yahweh say? All, all in the Torah, therefore whatsoever they bid you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do after their works. Question. What does it mean by those two words, their works? And one word. Say it. Right. Tell me. Huh? She goes to class. Amen. Okay. He says, but not after their works, after their Talmud. For they say, what do they say? They, they say the Torah, but they don't do it. That's why he called them Sadducees, Pharisees, and hypocrites. Acts 21 and 20. What are we learning? We are trying to stay on the topic of why the Yahudin, why the Jews are not coming today. Because we're not preaching the same gospel. And when they heard, when they heard it, they glorified Yahweh. What did they hear? They heard the good news, not the good news. That you can have the law, the law of Moses written in your heart now by being born again. And said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews, look at your neighbor, says thousands of Yahudim. There are which believe, and they are all zealous. Everybody say zealous. zealous. Of the law. See, they were zealous of the law. So these uneducated Christians, they don't know that they got the word the law mixed up with the, with the what? Talmud. Very good. All right. Now, let's go to verse 21 and 24. Take... Then take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is not Torah. And all may know that these things were of, that they were informed concerning you, concerning Saul, the lies, are nothing. Okay, the lie was going around, the big lie. Okay, so they're saying, okay, just shave his head, just, you know, show him you're given the benefit of the doubt, you shave their head, and, and then they're going to study, and they're going to find out what you live, preach, and teach, walk, and talk. They're going to find out that it, it's nothing, but that thou thyself also walketh orderly and keepeth the law. Notice this New Testament. They, to walk orderly is, guess what? To keep the law by the power of the Holy Ghost, by being born again of water and of the Spirit, by confessing Yahweh with your mouth, by being water baptized in, in Yahweh's name. Acts, because that's in the Bible. Acts 24 and 13. Neither can they prove. Ah, who's trying to prove what? How, who, who's trying to prove Shaul wrong? Good. Pharisees. Sadducees, Pharisees, the, the people of the Talmud, right? The people of the Talmud. The things whereof now they neither look at they went before a court. Neither can they prove the things whereof they accuse you. But this I confess thee, says Shaul, 
Okay. It says, accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way they call heresy, what are they calling heresy? Stop. Find your brain. Let's do it a little massage. Let's get it to think. Let's not a, let it stink. Let's think it. Okay, now. Now we found our brain. We massage it. We bring it back to life. Okay. Now. What are the Talmud people calling heresy? Good. You go to the head of the class. She said Torah. Yeah. Pure Torah. Right. So worship I, Ha Elohim, of my fathers. So they, 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 these people, are, 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 they're, they're telling me I'm a heretic? Yes, in their perverted eyes, I am a heretic because I serve the Torah of my fathers. So how can the Christians say we can break Torah all through the book of Acts? No wonder the Jews cannot be saved through the Christians. They might get a little drip and a little drop of a Jew here and a Jew there. But not somebody that studies. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He says, hey man, I'm, yeah. If they want to call me a heretic according to their standards, then baby, I'm a heretic. And I believe all things written in the law and in the prophets. How can, how, how can they have the absurdity to tell us we can break the law? All through here, Acts 25 and 7, it says, And when he came, uh, when he was come, Ha Yahudin, which came down from Jerusalem, stood round about and laid many grievous complaints against Shaul. In other words, I'm, in other words, these people of the Talmud. They came all the way from Jerusalem to catch up with Paul to have him brought before a court and tell lies on him. Sounds like the Democratic Party, doesn't it? <laughs> Amen. Now, against Joel, and it says, and in this court, guess what? They could not prove it. That's Bible. It's written word. What did Shaul adhere to? The Torah and the prophets and being born again. Neither against the temple nor yet against Caesar have I offended. Anything at all. At all. Okay, today we have another problem. Let us review first the religious leadership of the Talmud. Uh, bought false accusations. Everybody say false accusations. False accusations. Against the Messiah and all the apostles. With lies that they were not teaching how Torah they were false accusations. They were not teaching Talmud. That was their problem. If you preach against Talmud and you preach for Torah, guess what? That ugly head of the first century all the way back to the book of Genesis is going to raise up. Now we got a new problem. Today is Christians teaching that Messiah and the apostles did away with the law. Their teachings are totally perverted. Why Jews cannot accept Christianity? Christians doing away with the law in Colossians. Colossians 2 and 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holiday or the new moon or the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Messiah Yahweh. Paul was telling new converts. Paul was telling new converts. Paul was re-instructing new converts. Hey, baby, you are doing everything correct. Your holidays are correct. Your new moons are correct. Your Sabbath day correct. Do not let other people judge you for doing it correct. Are you with me? Yes. Nowhere does Paul preach you can break the law. 24 and 13, neither can they prove things whereof they accuse me. Amen. But I confess, in other words, they can't, these people out there, they can't prove. But they try to pull the wool over our eyes because we don't know, we, we don't know that Paul, the apostles in Hamashiach were preaching against the Talmud, the religious traditions of men. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware. Oh, yeah. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. 
Catholic Church, Christian Church, vain deceit. After the traditions of man, everybody say traditions of man. After the rudiments of the world, everybody say the world. What What is the world? The, the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. If any man have a love for the world, the love of Yahweh is not in him. But these are the traditions of the world. After man. And not after Messiah. Wherefore, if you be dead, Colossians 2 and 20, with Yahweh HaMashiach, if you're dead, dead from what? Dead from the rudiments of the world. Not dead to Torah, but dead to Talmud. Come on. We, we, we got to know what to put in there. If you're dead to the rudiments of the world, you're dead to Talmud. You're dead to these other religious organizations that add to the Bible. We don't need anybody to add to the Bible. We know what the Bible says about adding. Do we not know what the Bible... We, we just read it today. Amen. It says, uh, um, why, why is though the living in the world that you're subject to oracles, uh, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish for after using... The, he said, after the commandments and the doctrines of men. When I was a good old Catholic boy, we weren't supposed to eat meat on Friday. You had to eat fish. If you, ate, if you ate meat on Friday, it was a mortal sin. You had to go to confession and confess that. Acts 25 and 7. He said, when he was come, when he was come, Ha Yahudin, which came down from Jerusalem, this is... What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to reiterate here that after Colossians, after the two Colossians, trying to show you the spirit behind it all. The spirit is uneducation, ignorance, and lies. Trying to hold up Christianity and holding up the Jewish Talmud. Devarim. Deuteronomy 13.3 Thou shalt not hearken unto the... Oh, listen. Th th this, is how you, this is how you know if you're right. This is in the Jews' heart. This is why they're not saving Jews because the Jews knows Devarim 13. J -j 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 the Jews knows Devarim 13 because that is the measuring stick to see if someone is preaching truth or not. Take a look at it. Devarim, uh, Devarim 13 and 3 Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, Nevim, or that dreamer of dreams, for Yahweh your Elohenu prove, proveth you to know whether you love Yahweh your Elohim with all of your heart and mind and soul. So these false prophets and these false prophecies, they come, they, they're testing you to see if you love truth. So the Jews know they got it in the heart. Man, they're studying this. Man, they got, I mean, they're studying the brain, the brain. And they say, this religion can't be right. This religion can't be right. We've got to have the right religion. They only lack one little thing. The Hamashiach being born again. Okay? It says uh, in verse 4, You shall walk after Yahweh your Eloheinu and fear Yahweh and keep His mitzvah, His commandments, and obey His voice and shall serve Him and cleave unto Him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken because he has spoken to turn you away from Yahweh, your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust you out of the way which Yahweh, your Elohim, commanded thee to walk. We are to keep his commandments. And false prophets, according to Deuteronomy 3 and 3, teach us, Something different. First John 5. Amen. For the love of Elohim. For it, this is the love. What is? For this is the love. What is the love of Elohim? That we keep his mitzvah. Keep his commandments. And his mitzvah, his commandments are not grievous. First Yochanan or Yochanan Aleph. Yochanan Aleph, 1 John 2 and 6. He that saith he abideth in Messiah ought himself also to walk as Messiah walked. He walked in the law. Yochan, Yochan Aleph, 15. No, that, that's not Aleph. I've got to take that Aleph out. And just in Yochan, 15 and 10. If you keep my mitzvah, 
Remember, he learned his mitzvah from the Father. If you keep my mitzvah, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's mitzvah, abide in his love. So what's he saying? His mitzvah and the Father's mitzvah are the same mitzvah. His commandments and the Father's commandments are the one commandment. And I guess that's it. Amen. Any questions? Would anybody have a question? Oh, only through the mercies of Yahweh. Amen. Amen. So uh, we, we just want to, to pray, amen, that the word, amen, would richly abound in our hearts that when false prophets try to preach us something false, that we would be awake and that if it doesn't line up with the word of Torah and his his mitzvah, his commandments, that we know that they, at this point, are liars, but there is teshuva for them. There is repentance for them. Amen. But don't let them persuade you. Just because the whole world does it, doesn't mean that they're right. back with information on how you can contact us, support us, and participate in our services. But first of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been a blessing to you and that you've gained something from it. If you have any questions or comments about the topic brought forth in today's video, if you would like prayer, or if you would like to get baptized into the name of Yahweh HaMashiach, then please email us at yahwahisalmighty at gmail.com or call us by dialing 713-494-2164. We would love to hear from you. Our services are broadcasted live every Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch these services by going to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Almighty. There, you can subscribe to receive updates of when we upload new videos. Finally, if you would like to support us so you can help us bring this truth you just heard to the world and that you can continue to be edified by what Yahweh gives us through His Word, then please go to bit.ly slash yamdoni or mail your donation to Yahweh Apostolic Ministries, 3534 K Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19134. We would deeply appreciate anything you could give. So until the next time, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Shalom.